today we're looking at the all new Tooltop ET828 Pro oscilloscope slash multimeter. Gotta like that. And a big keep on testing shout out to Tooltop. Thanks so much for sending it in for this review. ET828 Pro. Take a look at that box. Start off with professional waveform multimeter. Nice colored. Doesn't have that vague sort of brownie box. We see a lot in the uh, cheapo realm. Two in one. Looking good. And look at that. They even give us one of those cloth style carry cases. And by the way, it passed the smell test. Ooh, it actually smelled good. What else do you get? Well, you get your scope meter manual, user manual. Pretty verbose. Actually, you'll be looking at this a lot because a lot of different features on the 828 Pro. And as well, and this is pretty cool, you get a cheat sheet, an oscilloscope operating cheat sheet. Everything at the touch of your fingers here on your uh, you know, quick glance. This is a really good idea, especially for a, a scope meter like this. Great idea. And of course, hey, let's not forget those test leads. Standard L, Cheapo Realm, Cat 3, 1000 volt. Uh, nothing special, but hey. One thing that really stands out on the A28 Pro is that gorgeous color display. That is one good looking screen. I don't know, blocky, chunky fonts perhaps, but man, it just works for me. It looks uber cool. Kind of a Tron thing going on. I don't know, but I really like it. One thing I'm not liking is this selector switch. It's almost impossible to one hand. It is so hard to move. It is nuts. Why, oh why? You gotta two hand this meter uh, to get anywhere. And even then it still might get lost between ranges. Uh, if you wanna stop that annoying beeping all the time, before you turn the meter on, hold down on the F4 key, then turn it on. Quiet mode is now on. No more beeping. Precision voltage reference has been heating up for about 20 minutes now. 5.000 is what we want. 5.001 is what we get. Oh, that is definitely in spec. Right now, of course, we're looking at a waveform because waveforms are what this multimeter, well, waveform multimeter is all about. Set right now for a sine wave, two volts peak to peak, and look at that nice looking waveform. Now, of course, we can adjust the waveform by adjusting the time base. How do we do that? Easy. Hit F1, brings us into time base. F2 and F3 are the time base select keys. So you can adjust your waveform by hitting F1 or F2. When you're happy with what you see, hit the exit key and you are good to go. Hey, let's try a different waveform. Let's try a square wave. Oh, there we go. Not bad, not bad. Once again, if we go into that time base, we can adjust to our preference. What's easier, what's worked best for us and uh, there we go okay exit looking good now if we don't like the screen brightness hit that f4 key and we have three modes i like to keep it on high it just works for my eyes a uh, little bit of glare on the display so having it on high just sort of makes it uh, easy breezy once you're happy with that you're good to go Something else we'll talk about very quickly are the trigger sets. We have three triggers with this meter. To access them, hit the F3 key, and there you go. So we have the auto mode, single mode, and normal mode. I'm gonna keep it in auto. When we're happy with that, click exit, and trigger is triggering. Cool. Waveforms can be saved on the A28 Pro, and it's really, really simple. You want to save, simply to press on the S button like so that has frozen that waveform in time basically taken a snapshot now you want to take that snapshot and actually archive it or file it on your meter to do that you have to pick a save slot take the same s button and hold down on it for two seconds now we can choose our save slot we choose it by simply pressing f1 or f2 to pick that save location once you found the slot that you want to save on, hit the F4 button and it is now saved. Remember, 10 save slots are what you have, 10 different waveforms are what you can archive. 
To get out of it, simply press the S key again, hold for two seconds, and you're exiting that database. Simple. The select switch, so here you can see F3 in this case, and we're gonna go into continuity. There we are, look at that. I am excited, I am excited. Here we have our standard default test leads. How's it gonna be, loud, not so loud? Let's find out. Hey, that's pretty loud. Loud latched. Not bad for the default leads. Way, Let's try those bro masters. Proven, proven mathematically that, uh, yeah, you will get knots when you put wires together. It's just a mathematical conclusion. Oh, I'm telling you. Much easier to get those knots undone, though, uh, with pro masters. Okay, let's, let's get going here. Blistering 79.7 decibels, maximum output volume in continuity. That's a booyah. Remember, F3 is your select key. All right, let's try AC voltage. Plug it into a standard plug. And we're getting a high voltage beep, letting us know we're sort of in a danger zone. 120.7 volts AC. So now I'd like to see that AC sine wave. And the reason why that AC and the voltage are so close together is because all we have to do now is move the selector one down and bada boom, bada bing, there is our sine wave. So you can see we are sitting in diode mode. Here we go, starting off with that red LED lit with a forward voltage drop over to the green. No problem. The yellow, yes. The white. And finally, the blue. Yes, five out of five. Oh, loving it. And no worries when it comes to standard dials. It reads those just fine. However, we do not get that nice audible short. Output voltage in dial mode, a very balmy 3.2 volts. I'm having too much fun here. Oh, all right, now we're looking at milliamps. Sitting at 24 milliamps right now, coming in at 23.99. Hey, not too shabby. Let's bring it down. Sitting now at 20 milliamps, spot on, coming in at 19.99. 10 milliamps, 9.99. 5 milliamps, 4.99, just 0.1. Oh, wow, so close. And let's bring it all the way down to 1 milliamp. 0.99 sitting at half a milliamp 480 microamps so you can tell in the low current spectrum no problems whatsoever the incarnation of this meter the 8208 i don't know if you saw that video or not a couple of years back boy it had a very confusing uh, obfuscated capacitance mode Basically, you had two separate capacitance measurement types. You had the low from, I think it was 10 picofarad to one nanofarad. And then you had a separate high capacitance mode on a separate range. You had to physically turn with the range selector switch to bring it up to 10 millifarad. Thank God those days are gone, over with. Whew, thank you, 82. Eight pro, uh, yeah. So now we just have that one capacitance range goes up to 100 millifarad, and uh, man, oh man, it makes life a whole lot easier when it comes to testing capacitors. All right, let's try it out quickly. We have a 10, um, 10,000 microfarad, 10 millifarad capacitor right here, and let's see how quickly it can range. And there you go. That was pretty fast. 9.05 ish millifarad. Uh, yeah, that's good with this cap. So there you go. Um, much easier, much simpler, and definitely an improvement. 0.5 of an ohm resistor. Hey, not a problem for the A28 Pro. By the way, there's no resistance on the stock default test leads, but if you did need to rel, you have a nice rel feature here by hitting the F1. Excellente. Alrighty, it's teardown time. Let's start off with those uh, three Double A batteries. I've got it hooked up right now with those X Tars. These are some great rechargeables. Uh, link in the description. Starting off with those input jacks, and they are the split variety. Um, uh, you know what? Pretty decent solder blobs. Looking good. No complaints here. And right above those battery wells, we have our relay 
sitting in between lots of, look at, look at that, man. That is a lot of surface mount components here. I mean, just a, <laughs> a lot. Uh, beside that over here is our MS9280. That's a 10-bit ADC from Hangzhou Tech. Uh, I believe it's a SSOP28 package. And just beside that over here is the EEP ROM. That's a BL24, 32 kilobytes EEP ROM from Shanghai Baoling Technologies. So they did a pretty lame job of trying to scratch this up, but as you can see, a it's a 32-bit ARM microcontroller chip. And, and what does that say? Remove after washed. Not sure why we have that sticking on. Now, unfortunately, they did do a really good job of covering up that main IC, uh, the multimeter IC right here. Boy, oh boy, it is completely whitewashed. Tried everything, but uh, suffice to say, I can't tell what it is. I cannot tell. I hate it when that happens. Moving up a little bit more. There we have our speaker piezo, and uh, we have some inputs over here, probably for factory calibration, what have you. Here is the uh, ribbon cable for the display. All right, let's put it on the other side, see what we have to look at. Have it flipped over to the other side. There's the rotary selector tracks, nothing on there. I'm gonna put a little bit of dielectric because it is an abomination right now in terms of trying to move this thing. Uh, and it looks like some sort of a hybrid uh, mechanism here, rotary selector, definitely not ball and spring. Um, I don't know what they have going underneath, but oh God, it is really, really bad. Main screen itself, as you can see, really nice attention to detail here. We've got that ribbon cable coming up from the other side in there, solid. Uh, overall, the build quality here is really exceptional. Very nice. I'm liking it. There's that current shunt, and it is a big current shunt. Look at that. There's one PTC over here. That is it. That is all. And we have one of those... Um, uh, resettable SMD fuses here on the high current side, so we don't even have a standard fuse uh, as well. So, uh, you know, uh, anyway, is what it is. Just putting a little bit of dielectric on there. I'm using the, uh, the Permatex here. Dielectric grease, 81150. Good stuff. Doesn't take much. Put some on. Give it a little... Bada boom, bada bing with your finger. And I don't know, maybe it'll make a difference, maybe not. Closing thoughts on the Tooltop ETA 28 Pro. Yeah, this is definitely a good buy. Hey, this meter has come a long way from its previous version and improved dial performance you wouldn't believe. Hey, the old one couldn't even light up one diode. So yeah, this is definitely a massive improvement. Capacitance improved, great color display. And what can you say about those ranges, man? They are awesome. Awesome. Decent waveform analysis and basic 10 megahertz oscilloscope functionality. So you've got a pocket oscilloscope for not yeah, a lot not of dinero. Not perfect at all. Hey, it feels really plasticky. I really wish uh, the build quality externally was just a little more oomphy. At least, uh, you know, a non-slip grip or something like that would take it up a definite notch. And that selector switch, don't get me started, one of the worst I've ever had to use. Poor input protection, yeah, but you know what? You're probably gonna be using this on the bench anyway, so I don't think that is definitely a deal breaker. The Tooltop ET828 Pro gets a solid four out of five stars. Hey, for the little money they're asking for this meter, you are definitely getting a lot of bang for your hard earned buck. Thanks for watching this review, everybody. Till the next one. Keep on testing. If you're wondering, the answer is yes, indeed. The dielectric on that rotary selector track did help but only a bit. Still, even with that dielectric added, it's still... <sighs> still not the greatest selector out there. Ugh.